Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about how do we select some data in our SQLite database via Python. There are three methods particularly that we're going to look at. If we look at the SQLite 3 API documentation, uh, the three we're going to look at is the fetch one, fetch many, and fetch all. What do those mean? What do they do? And we're also going to look at how do we get the column names because you'll see why that's important here in a second. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. That way you don't miss any videos in the future that you might find useful. And I also have all the previous SQLite videos in a playlist. So if you want to start from the beginning, you can check those out. So let's get into it. This might look a little bit different from the last video because a lot of it is taken out. And now we just connect to our database. We create a cursor object. We have an empty SQL string. We're going to execute that SQL. And then I want to run this fetch one method. So to run that, it is a method off of the cursor object. And so what fetch one does, as you would expect, is once we run a select query and we execute that select query, it'll fetch one result from the result set that that query returns. And you can keep running this method, this fetch one method, until you've returned all of the available results. So for instance, if we go ahead and look at our database to refamiliarize ourselves, here's a cars table. And if I said just select all, it's going to start with this Audi A4 all the way down to the Ford Focus. So theoretically, we could run this fetch one method 11 different times, and it would get all of the different results separately. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's select all from cars. That's going to be our SQL statement. We'll then execute it, get the result, and print the result. And if we run it, here's a tuple of the data from fetching just one row that's returned from the query. And so if I wanted to fetch one again, just to show you, I'm just going to copy this fetch one and then print again so we can do it twice. And we'll run this. And here we have the Audi, the Ford Escape. And if we kept doing this, you kind of get the point. We'd fetch one each time until the results returned are all fetched. But something you might want to do, and we'll get into the other two fetch methods here in a second, but something you might want to do is, sure, I have the tuple of the data, but how do I know which data corresponds to which column? And what I can do is create a list of the column names in the order that they are in the table. So I'm going to remove this extra fetch one that we created in the print. And right after we execute the SQL, I want to print out cursor dot description. And if we run this, it's going to be a tuple of tuples. You can see the first item in each tuple is actually the column name. And this is the order that they are in the database. It goes ID, manufacturer, model, and then number of doors. And if we look back at the database, ID, manufacturer, model, and number of doors are the columns. So knowing this, we can use a list comprehension to grab just the first index of each tuple and then collect all of the column names. So let's print a list comprehension column for column in cursor dot description. And this is just going to return the first tuple. So in fact, we want to do column index zero. And now if we run this, we now have a list of the column names. Okay, so if you're using Python to serve up some kind of UI, some kind of web page or something, and you wanted to display the column names, you can obtain them this way. So we showed fetch one, and there's another method, fetch many. And this takes in a parameter, a numeric one, and this describes how many records you want to fetch at a time. So maybe we want to fetch three. And now if we run fetch many passing in three, we have a list of three tuples. And if we go over the amount that's in the database, because we only have 11 records in this particular table, but if let's say we do 15, it's going to stop at 11 because it's not just gonna make uh, extra rows on its own, right? So if for whatever reason, you just wanted to show a select subset of the data returned from your SQL query, you could do it this way. And then lastly, the one you're probably going to use the most is fetch all because this fetches all of the data returned from the SQL query. 
And if we run this, it's going to be the same result as fetch many with 15 because it's fetching everything from that table, which the fetch many with 15 also did. But instead of you having to determine, okay, how many are going to be in this table and then using the fetch many that way, just use fetch all. That way you return everything and there's no questions asked. So lastly, for fun, I am going to do another list comprehension. And this list that we're going to create is going to hold all of the different manufacturers from the cars table in the database. And I'm going to use this cursor.fetchall to help us out with this list comprehension. So instead of printing the result, let's create a list. And this is going to be car index one, because the first index of each tuple is car manufacturer for car n result because result is containing a list of tuples of everything returned from that SQL query. And now if we run this, we now have a list of every single manufacturer from the cars table in that database. So we did a few things. We went through the three different methods of fetching the data from a select statement in our SQLite database. And then we also showed how do we get the column names dynamically from our cursor. Thanks so much for watching. Really hope you uh, got something from this video and I hope to see you in the next one.